Good day everyone. So to, in this episode, we'll be looking at basic steps to consolidation and the major working notes that we require when we want to consolidate. And this is brought to you by Okowo Abayomi and orchestrated by the Accounting Media. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. So, according to IFRS 10, there are some steps you need to follow when we want to consolidate. And IFRS then gave three of those steps, whereas the first of that step is one. It said, combine like things like assets, liability, income, expenses, cash flow of both entity. It is something that is very easy. If I want to consolidate the parent company and the subsidiary company, I can add the asset of both companies together. I add the liability of both companies together. So if I have the parent company asset, liability, income and expenses, I add it with the subsidiary asset, income, expenses, liability. So it gives me the total asset of the group as a whole. So step two talks about elimination and offset of two things the first is carrying amount of any investment of parent in the subsidiary so the parent company have investment in the subsidiary but because the parent company own the subsidiary company we look at both of them as a group and when you look at two companies as a group it means that they should be seen as a single entity so what IFRS want us to do is that our investment in the subsidiary should be eliminated when we want to consolidate because if it is a single company, automatically I cannot invest in myself. So when I'm preparing my group financial statement, I am expected to eliminate the carrying amount of my investment in the subsidiary and also the parent portion of the equity of the subsidiary. If I invest in my subsidiary, in the subsidiary, let us assume we have 80% of the equity share capital of the subsidiary. In that equity capital, I own 80%. I have to eliminate it. Also, my investment in that place, I have to eliminate it so that I can have a balanced account. The next one is eliminate or offset item related to intergroup transaction. Intergroup transaction is one of the key issues in consolidation because we said both parent company and subsidiary are to be looked at as a single entity and a single entity cannot owe itself money. So intergroup receivables and payable, for example, have to be eliminated. Any unrealized profit within the group have to be eliminated. So that is why we have to eliminate any item that relates to intergroup transaction so the next thing we have to look at here are the key necessary workings that we need when we are consolidating either for the purpose of examination condition or in real life situation now there are basically five workings for the purpose of preparing consolidated statement of financial position now the first thing we need to know is that we must be able to establish control or the group structure. The next one is to be able to determine the net asset of subsidiary. After that, I must be able to determine my goodwill, followed by the determination of non-controlling interest, and I need to be able to compute correctly the group retained earnings, or what we call the parent retained earnings. These are the key five workings we need to know in order to consolidate let us look at this one by one so the first thing we need to look at here is how to determine our control or group structure for the purpose of financial reporting examination calculation we look at group structure we establish control by looking at parent company having more than 50 percent in the subsidiary company and in many cases we have what we call simple group so in simple group we have a parent company 
only more than 50% in the subsidiary company. So example here, yeah, I use 75%. So in a simple group, once I establish that the parent company own more than 50% of the equity share capital in the subsidiary, I can establish that I need to prepare group financial statements. And again, it is possible that one parent have more than more than one subsidiary. So the two subsidiary can be referred to as fellow subsidiary. And again, we have what we call vertical grouping. And in vertical grouping, we have a parent company investing in a particular subsidiary. And the subsidiary company further having another subsidiary and conclude that the ultimate parent have investment indirectly in the sub subsidiary and another situation that we can have is what we refer to as the d shape group in d shape group we have a parent having investment in a subsidiary and the subsidiary also having another investment in another subsidiary whereas the parent also go to that sub subsidiary to have a direct investment so through its own subsidiary, the ultimate parent have indirect investment, in this case, in another subsidiary, and it went to that subsidiary to get another investment again, which make him to have both direct investment and indirect investment in the sub-subsidiary. So that is our workings one. The workings two we have to look at in consolidation is how to determine the net asset of subsidiary. The net asset of subsidiary have to be looked at at the date of reporting, which some call date of consolidation, and we also look at it at the date of acquisition, the position of the account, and the difference between the two periods give us what we refer to as post-acquisition period. So in this case, I have to bring in the ordinary share capital of the subsidiary, bring in the share premium bring in the retained earnings i bring in any other reserve that is available in the subsidiary as at this date also there can be fair value adjustment which will be explained later where you have to bring in into account some item that was omitted in the subsidiary financial statement and when we do this automatically we get our balance so our balance we have our balance at the date of reporting i have my figure at the date of acquisition and i have my post acquisition after that we can move to the next working note which is how to determine goodwill so to determine goodwill the standard says we have to bring in fair value of consideration transfer by parents which means that for the parent company to acquire any share in the subsidiary, they have to furnish some consideration to the owner of the subsidiary. They have to pay either in cash, sometimes they can pay through share exchange, sometimes they can pay through deferred consideration, at times we can furnish contingent consideration, and at times we can have loan notes. So these are various ways with which the parent company can furnish consideration to the subsidiary company. So once I get the fair value of the consideration transfer, I, I, I sum it together and at the same time, I add my non-controlling interest. After I add my non-controlling interest, I will be able to get a total. And once I get my total, I will less the net asset of subsidiary at the date of acquisition gotten from the previous workings from the previous working we have the total at the date of acquisition and at the date of reporting i will bring the figure at the date of acquisition here and when i list it i will get my goodwill at acquisition at times it is possible that there will be impairment if there is impairment i list the impairment and i can get my goodwill at the date of reporting so afterward i can move to the next working note which is determination of non-controlling interest. Very simple and interesting. To determine my non-controlling interest, I bring my balance forward, 
sometimes it will be given in the question sometimes we will have to calculate it ourselves after that if there is post acquisition profit the non controlling interest will take its portion of that profit after that there can be impairment this impairment will only be used if nci is measured using fair value but if nci is measured using the proportionate method the NCI will not take part in the sharing of impairment. After that, we recognize any unrealized profits and non-controlling interest will only take part of the unrealized profit if and only if the subsidiary is the seller. But if the parent is the seller, unrealized profits will not come to non-controlling interest. So we get our total balance for non-controlling interest. So after this, our next working, major workings will be to determine the group retained earnings or what we refer to as the parent retained earnings. And my parent retained earnings will be gotten by bringing the balance forward from the statement of financial position. I add my post acquisition profit by multiplying the percentage holding by the parent by the post acquisition profit calculated in our workings too. After that, we less our impairment. In this case, if the fair value method is being used, we set the percentage holding by the parent company multiplied by the impairment. But if not, if the proportionate method is used, all the impairments suffered in the question will be borne by only the parent and is to be taken to group retained earnings. After that, we can less our unrealized profits by multiplying the percentage holding by the parent multiplied by the unrealized profit if subsidiary is the seller. But if parent is the seller, all the unrealized profits will be taken to group retained earnings. And after that, we can get our total. So these are the five workings which we need to know for us to understand properly how to consolidate and in the next video i will be looking at specific explanation to some of these workings to aid our knowledge don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel thank you